Hey sisters, in this video I'm going to be teaching you about the Gospels. What is the Gospel? Why are there four? Why so many? Keep watching and I'm going to teach you now. The Gospel is an account of the life of Christ. What Christ did while he was here. Why are there four? That's a good question. Why are there four? Why aren't there two? Why aren't there six? I don't know why there's why there isn't just one. I don't know why there isn't just why there isn't six. Look, look. You you want to have right when 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 we're thinking about the gospel, right? And it's this is an account of the life of Christ. Think about it. If there was only one account of the life of Christ, would that be very reliable if we only have one account? And if we had too many, would that be reliable? So four seems to be like a really good number. Now, while the gospel is an account of the life of Christ, it is written from different perspectives, right? So if you know the gospels, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so you have the gospel according to Matthew, meaning you have the life of Christ according to Matthew, and then you have the life of Christ according to Mark, and you have the life of Christ according to Luke, and you have the life of Christ according to John, right? Or gospel doesn't mean, like that word gospel does not mean the life of Christ, right? The gospel means the good news, and what the good news is the account of the life of Christ, right? The good news is Christ is here and he lives. Christ meaning Savior, right? That's the good news. So gospel means good news. And when we read the good news, the good news really is the life of this person that we know as Jesus, Yeshua, Christ, Messiah, that's the good news. The good news is his life and what he did in his life for humanity. So what is the difference between all four Gospels? Like why? Like what's the difference? So the difference would be, one of the main differences would be the, the audience to whom the, like Matthew, who he was writing to. Matthew was writing to specifically to a Jewish audience. Luke was writing to a Gentile audience. And John's gospel is really special, and I'll tell you now. The gospel of Mark, Matthew, and Luke together are called the Synoptic Gospels. They're called the Synoptic Gospels because there are many common details in those gospels when you look at when you when you really sit and analyze them and go through them kind of like a detective would or or whatever um there there are a lot of details that they kind of pull from one another mark's gospel was written first and i'm not sure if matthew or luke's was written after I don't know which one came right after Mark, but Mark's Gospel was written first. It's the closest one to... And when I say it's it was written first, I would say it was probably written like 15 years or so after the resurrection of Christ. But that's important because although it seems like a long time, it was still written in the time of like who... It was still written in the time of the people who lived among Christ, right? So 15 years after Christ resurrected, the people who saw Christ were still alive. And all of the Gospels were written in the time when the people who saw Christ were still alive. And that's really important because that makes them more reliable. And that would be for a different video, right? If I would do probably do a video on the the right on the reliability of the of the gospels. But let me get back to Matthew, Luke, and 
Mark being synoptic gospels. So they are usually seen together because they include a lot of the same details and they kind of show Jesus in a very similar sort of way. Now, I don't want to say exactly the same way, right? Because for Matthew, he showed Jesus as a king and Mark showed Jesus as a suffering servant and Luke showed Jesus as uh, a, 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 a king for, for all people, not just the Jewish nation. But the details that are included in those Gospels are very similar, very similar. I would say out of those Gospels, the one, like out of the Synoptic Gospels, the one that includes more details is Luke. And Luke is also, just for your information, Luke, the, the Gospel of Luke is also the longest Gospel. The Gospel of John is very different because it, it paints Jesus as God. The way John opens his gospel is in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Throughout John's entire gospel, John alludes to the fact that Jesus is God. And he does that by purposely including the seven I am statements that Jesus makes throughout his ministry on earth. I don't know all seven statements by heart, but I know a couple. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of life. Or I am, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the Good Shepherd, I am the door, I think that's one of them, so that's five out of seven, not too shabby. Um, those I am statements is a really big deal, and it's a really big deal that John puts that in his gospel, because, and you may not know this if you're a new Christian and you haven't read the Old Testament yet or whatever, maybe you, you heard it in church. And definitely, there are some people who understand that when we say God, right, and we say who is God, God says, we say God is the great I am. And when God, the Father, was speaking to Moses through the burning bush, Moses Right? He was telling Moses to go and to free the people. There was some he hesitation and things like that for Moses. But finally Moses agrees and he says, Okay, who do I say is sending me? Because people, just like today, people believe in a lot of different gods. People then believed in a lot of different gods. And so Moses wanted to know, Who do I say is sending me? What God is sending me? And God replies... I am who I am. And then Jesus comes, and according to John, right, and we, we believe the Bible is true, according to John, Jesus made these statements. I am the bread of life, or I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. He's using that, that verbiage that God the Father used with Moses and we only see it in John's Gospel and so this is really in John's Gospel is really where we see Jesus is not just King of the Jews Jesus is not just a suffering servant Jesus is not just a man for all the people Jesus is, is not just human Jesus is is God. And we see that through those statements and we see that right from the opening line John wants you to know Jesus was God.
when he was on earth, he says Jesus was God. And he wants you to know that right from the beginning. And then he continues to support that opening statement throughout the rest of his gospel. Now, why did John write Jesus like that? Right? And why? Well, John's gospel was the last gospel to be written. It was written, I would say, I think between, I think 40 and 50 years after the resurrection of, of Christ. And people were forgetting who Jesus was. And John didn't want people to forget. John wanted people to know exactly who Jesus was while he was on earth. And they were, people were saying things about Jesus that wasn't true. And they were forgetting. And so here comes John, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years later. And he writes his gospel and he sends it out. And he, he makes this really big statement in that opening line. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it's definitely a very special gospel. All the gospels are special because we see Jesus, um, the, how, we see all the different faces of Jesus in these gospels, but John is really the one where we see how Jesus is it's not just our savior, he, he, he's our God. I hope that this, of course, like I always say, I hope this video illuminated your walk with Christ. I hope that cleared some things up about the gospel and keep watching for more fundamentals that I think you need to know as you begin your walk with Christ.